na mfalme kama wewe. Umetukuka Jehova. Umeinuliwa zaidi ya wafalme wengine wote. Aba tunaliabudu jina lako. Tunakutukuza kwa sababu ya wema wako. Umetamalaki Jehova. Tunakuinua. Tukitangaza kwamba mataifa yote baba yanakufahamu na yamejua kwamba wewe hakika ni Mungu ambaye ashindwe. Kea sifa na utukufu. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. We give you praise and we give you honor. You are God with us. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. Father we pray. Baba tunaomba. We welcome you. Na tutakukaribisha. You've been so good. Umekuwa mwaminifu. Na tunakupenda Yesu. Thank you for everything. Asante kwa kila kitu. Thank you for everything. Asante kwa kila kitu. Thank you for the Bible exposition. Asante kwa sababu ya mafunzo ya Biblia. Thank you for your word. Asante kwa neno lako. Thank you for the session that we are getting into. Asante kwa habari kwa tunaenda. We know that you speak to us. Tunajua kwamba utasugumza nasi. Kwa sababu baada ya meza kwa sababu yetu. Katika china la Yesu. Amen. 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 Let's clap to the Lord. Waacha tumpigie Bwana Yesu makofi mazuri. Amen. Amen. Unaweza ukakaa. I'm sure you have enjoyed yourself. Najua ya kwamba natamani ya kwamba umefurahia. So far. Hapo tumefika. Have you enjoyed yourself? Je, umefurahia? Did you enjoy the word exposition? Umefurahia neno likifunzwa? Did you enjoy the tea? Je, umefurahia chai? Then you have enjoyed your time. 
Bia umefurahia wakati wako pia. Amen. Amen. I don't want to take much time. Sitaki kuchukua muda mwingi. I want to welcome our pastor. Nataka kukaribisha pastor wetu. To come and take us to the next session. Akuja tupeleke mahali ambapo tunaendelea. Come to the Lord as he comes. Mpigie Bwana Yesu makofi anapokuja. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Muko poa? Are you okay? Enjoying yourself? Mnafurahia? Right. I think it is we we'll go straight to hearing the word of God. Tutaenda kusikia neno la Bwana. Prepare yourself. Jiadae. Get yourself set. Jiadae. Get yourself ready. Ujiweke sawa. Uh, when we were going out. Wakati tulikuwa tunaenda nje. I was telling my wife. Nilikuwa naambia bibi yangu. Thank God for having a share. Nachukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kupata nafasi. Because she came here. Kwa sababu alikuja hapa. And he gave us a break. Na katupatia nafasi. Because if I'm the one who came here. Kama ni mimi ningekuja hapa. Believe you me. Niamini. You could not have gotten a break. Haugepata <laughs> break. Because I was feeling like we continue. Kwa sababu nilikuwa na hisia kwamba tuendelee na kuendelea. But thank God for the break. Lakini nashukuru Mungu kwa muda wa kupumzika tumepata. Our speaker. M- yaani mnenaji wetu wa leo. He is not new to me. Uh, okay. Si mgeni sana kwetu. Let me make a bit of correction. Because again when he was here some of you are not even here. Wengine hawako hapa akiwa hapa. But he has spoken to us some years back. Lakini ametuzungumzia miaka imepita. Telling you I'm expectant. Ambi akikwa bani metarajia. Natarajia. Apostle Simon Karioki. Apostle Simon Karioki. Uh, he has a, he has ministries across the southern Africa. Ana huduma Afrika kuzini. Uh, especially on a prophetic ministry kuhusu huduma ya kiunabii equipping and uh, uh, discovering equipping and releasing people kuada na kuwafunza na kuachilia watu wakaweza kutumikia mwenyezi Mungu God has used him in many many countries in this world amekuwa katika nchi nyingi katika dunia we are so privileged this time na tunasikia tuna furaha kubwa to hear from the man of God kusikia kutoka kwa mtumishi wa Mungu without wasting any more time na bila kutupa wakati mwingi i want to ask to rise up nataka kuambia mtsimame i want us to rise up zote tukaweza kusimama let's give a clap to jesus tumpigie bwana yesu makofi mazuri welcome the servant of the lord tunapomshukia mtumishi wa Mungu to us damu ya yesu twaimba damu ya yesu twaimba damu ya yesu Oh the blood oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood Majesty the King of Kings Mungu mkuu mfalme wa wafalme The Lord of Lords Bwana wa mabwana The Alpha Mwanzo The Omega Mwanzo 
the everlasting God, the Prince of Peace, the soon coming King, the lover of our souls, blessed be your holy name. There is none that compares to you in the heavens and even here on earth. Accept our worship this morning and bless us, O oh God, in a manner that you have not done before. Do something new in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Use me as your mouthpiece to speak your oracles in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have all prayed and somebody shouted aloud, Amen. Shout aloud, Amen. May the Lord richly bless you. You may have your seats. It is such a great joy to be here in this ministry. After many years, I was talking with Bishop Jimmy Kimani. And I was thinking, we, I, uh, we, I came here maybe 2008, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm so delighted to see all of you. And I pray that our time together this morning, that it will be enriching, it will be a blessing, in the name of Jesus. If you're in the house of God fully, you have not traveled anywhere with your mind, just lift up your hand. You are really here. Give your neighbor a high five on my behalf. I would want to appreciate Reverend Mwithi who has also kept in touch with me also over the years. I would also want to appreciate some of my spiritual children who I didn't even know who invited them just stand up. Listen, Mrs. Chengo. Uh, I'm a father of, by the way, I'm married. Ameoa. I have many spiritual children like this ones. God bless you and you may see. Thank you. I have uh, an old daughter who has made me the youngest grandfather in the whole world. I'm the, the, um, the youngest grandfather. Oh, in the whole world. I have a young two sons. She has two sons. One named after me. And then I've got a son in high school and the last born in primary. I could not come with my wife because uh, we had already there was something else that needed to be attended to. But I'm ready for you. Are you ready for me now? How many people are ready? Without wasting much time, I'll be speaking about the cross and the cross of Jesus Christ. So the title of the message is the cross. Touching people, changing lives. So the cross and the scripture that I will just take is Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. It is no longer I who lives. 
but Christ who lives in me. And the the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Chapter 3 of Galatians. Sura ya tatu wa ya Galatia. Oh foolish Galatians. Nyinyi wa Galatia wapumbavu. Who has bewitched you? Nani amewaloga? That you should not obey the truth. Ili busije mkati ukweli. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, now being made perfect by the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I'll be speaking about the cross. And of course touching people, changing lives. When I was invited to come and speak here, I started to think one of the things that has changed the lives of humanity. Because we ought to touch lives. We ought to change lives. But we can learn from the expert. And his name is Jesus Christ. What did he do to touch our lives? What did he do to transform our lives. I want to submit to you that the cross is a symbol of transformation. It is a place where we can truly get touched. We must bring the cross back to its place in the church. We must bring the message of the cross back to the church because it is through the message of the cross that people can be Touched, that people can be transformed. Let me speak to you a little bit about the cross. You know, in the Bible, the cross in the olden times before the crucifixion of Jesus was a symbol that was used uh, for criminals. Kwa sababu ya wale ambao walikuwa magaidi ama watu walikuwa wamepitenda maovu. Kama wewe ulikuwa jambazi. Jambazi. Mkora. Mtu mbaya. Ulikuwa unasulubiwa kwa msalaba. Kwa msalaba. Naona siku hizi watu wengi wanavaa msalaba. Hata bishops wengi wana msalaba na wengine wana tumbo kubwa hata zaidi ya yangu. Kwa hivyo msalaba ina, inaangalia washirika namna hii. Umewahi kuona msalaba inaangalia ka, ma bishop wale <laughs> Kama wewe ni bishop sawa sawa unakuwa na katumbo ukiwekelea ka msalaba hapa kanaangalia kana monitor wachungaji namna hii. Ningekuja na kamsalaba ndio mule. Lakini ni jambo naona na kupatia break dakika mbili tu usijali utarudi kazini. <laughs> Msalaba ni, ni inavaliwa kila mahali. Wamama ukiwaangalia wengine wana msalaba wameweka kwa masikio, wengine wameweka kwa kwa shingo. Nguo ni nyingi zina msalaba. But what I want to say to you Lakini kila ambacho mimi nataka kukuambia ni hii. There was a time you would not have wanted 
the cross. Because it was identified with criminals. It was something that you would not have ever wanted to associate yourself with. Because when you are a criminal, you are crucified on the cross. But let me tell you a story. There was one day one day when the cross received a man it received a man, the cross. And that man was not a criminal. And the cross was used to dirty blood. Ukapokea Yesu akisulubishwa wakati ulipokea damu msalaba wakati huo ukasema kwani ni nini kimebadilika nimezoea damu fulani lakini leo ile damu nimepokea ni damu safi ni damu ya nguvu kutoka siku hiyo <laughs> let me go back from that day when jesus was crucified kutoka siku hiyo ambapo kristo alisulubishwa the cross msalaba was converted from a symbol of disgrace from a symbol of shame from a symbol of dishonor and it became a symbol of fame a symbol of grace a symbol of honor this is how Christ works what he did on the cross is what he can do in your life what he did on the cross is what he can do in your life. He specializes in touching lives. He turns people who are full of shame. He turns people who are full of dishonor. People full of disgrace. And he touches them. And he makes them Symbols of fame. Symbols of grace. Symbols of honor. Let me tell you something about the cross. From that day that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. The cross became something that you want to identify with. Because Jesus died on that cross. To change the history of humanity. I want to speak a little bit more about the cross. The story of the Bible is a story of trees. The Bible in Genesis chapter 3 begins with the story of Adam and Eve eating from a green tree and dying. And then the story of the Bible ends with a man dying on a dry, on a dry tree. And life comes. This is an interesting Bible. If you read the Bible, you will be shocked. I thought that green trees would give life. But the Bible tells us that when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, death came to humanity. And the Bible ends with the story of a man dying on a tree. A dry tree. And giving life. I'm talking about the cross. What I want to say is this. The Bible is full of mysteries. It begins with the story of a man eating from a green tree. And dying. And bringing death. 
And that's the first Adam. And it ends up with Jesus dying on the cross. Which is a dry tree. And giving life. Now, what I want to say to you is this. It seems to me when God wants to use somebody mightily if God wants to use you mightily usually he begins with you from a green tree but the goal of God is to dry you up so that your life no longer identifies with a green tree. It identifies with a dry tree. There are people who have Wa yesu. Kwa nini yesu afe msalabani? Kuna jambo tunahitaji kusoma. Biblia imejaa mafunzo juu ya miti. Inaanza na mti na inaisha na mti. Na wewe utakuwa kama maisha yako uangali vizuri unaweza kuwa mti wa kwanza ama mti wa mwisho. Ili Maisha yetu ya guze watu. Lazima mungu anatupitishia mambo. Kwa sababu ule ni mti mka, mkavu. Eh, dry tree. Na, uh, mkavu. Mti ambao mkavu. Eh. Najwa kiswali changu ni chabara. Mta nisamehea kidogo. <laughs> na kawaida sihubiri na kiswahili. Mara nyingi ni megundua kwamba ili Mungu atumie mtu ili maisha yako ya guze watu kuna process ya kukaushwa Sijui kama mko mnahitaji ujumbe kama huu pengine mnataka ule wa nguvu zaidi na, lakini nitaelezea vile kulingana na vile mambo yapo Msalaba ni, ni mti mkavu si mti mbichi Na msalaba ni ishara ya vile Mungu anaweza taka kufanya na maisha yetu lazima anatupichishia mambo ili atukaushe. Wacha niwapatie ni mfano kidogo. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Twende katika kitabu cha Yeremia. Chapter 1. Moja. Are we still together? Tuko pamoja bado. If we are together shout hallelujah. Tuko pamoja hebu we are talking about the cross. Jesus died on the cross. He died there for you. But I'm looking deeply into the cross. And I'm, I've already mentioned one thing. That the cross was a place of shame, disgrace and dishonor. But one day, it felt clean. And I pray that one of these days wewe mwenye utasikia hiyo damu ikipitia mishipani mwako na kutakuwa na mabadiliko kwa sababu damu ya Yesu inalete mabadiliko Jeremiah 1 Jeremiah 1 verse 11 mstari wa 11 Moreover the word of the Lord came to me saying Jeremiah, what do you see? I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. I was once reading this scripture, and the Lord asked me, what did Jeremiah see? The Bible tells us that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after it is the call of Jeremiah. And God came to Jeremiah to say to him, Jeremiah, 
what do you see? Yani wewe Yeremia unaona nini? And Jeremiah said, Na yeye akasema hivi. I see a branch of an almond tree. Ninaona tawi tawi la mlozi unaochanua. I see a branch of an almond tree. Ninaona tawi ya mlozi unaochanua. And the Bible says, Na Biblia inasema Then the Lord said to him, Alafu Bwana akamwambia, You have seen well. Umeona vizuri. For I am ready to perform my word. Maana niko tayari kulitekeleza neno langu. So the Lord once asked me when I was doing fasting for Kwa kuna days. Kuna wakati Bwana aliniuliza wakati nilikuwa nafunga kwa siku kadhaa. What did Jeremiah exactly see? Yaani kuhakika kama haswa ni nini Yeremia aliona kabisa? What is this al- branch of almond tree? Ili tawi la mlonzi unaochanua ni nini yeye aliona? Msijali si ni karibu eh? ingekuwa comedy kidogo ndio mcheke kwa sababu wengine wenyu mnaangalia mchungaji na sura ngumu namna hii kama ningeanguka at least <laughs> haleluya lazima unasoma kutabasamu kidogo ukiangalia mhubiri usifanye aone kama unamweka uchungu najua wengine wengi mnafanya uso inakuwa ngumu namna hii ni kama mchunga, mchungaji anakup, anakuchuna Back to Jeremiah 1. Wacha turudi pale katika Yeremia 1. So the Bible says. Hivyo Biblia inasema hivi. That Jeremiah was asked. Yaani Yeremia aliulizwa. What do you wewe see? Wewe unaona nini? And Jeremiah replied. Na Yeremia akajibu akasema. I see a branch. Ninaona tawi of an almond tree. Na mlonzi unaochanua. So one time I was reading the scripture. Kwa hivyo kuna ma- wakati fulani nilikuwa nasoma maandiko. And maaniko. the Lord asked me. Na yeye Bwana akaniuliza hivi. What did Jeremiah actually see? Yeremia aliona nini haswa? I said he saw a branch of an almond tree. Nikasema aliona tawi la mlonzi unaochanua. And the Lord told me no 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 no. Na yeye Bwana akaniambia hapana hapana. What is this branch of an almond tree? Nini hii ambayo anasema ni tawi la mlonzi ambao unachukua? And I knelt down. Alafu mimi nikapiga magoti chini. I started to pray. Nikaanza kuomba. That Lord show me. Bwana yewe Mungu niombe. What Jeremiah saw? Ni haswa Yeremia aliona. And that day I saw it. Nasiku hiyo mimi niliona. Because I also went to the scripture. Kwa sababu pia nilienda katika maandiko. One of the scriptures that I read and iko moja ambao mimi nilisoma which i will give you after ambacho nitawapa baadaye is that one of the times in the bible wakati mmoja katika biblia there was a dispute between the 12 tribes kulikuwa na mzongamano kati ya kabila they were fighting za Israeli. against the, the issue was power walikuwa wanangangania nguvu ama mamlaka who should be the leader ni nani anastahili awe kiongozi uh, is it judah ni yuda Is it Simeon? Ama ni Simeoni? Is it Levi? Ama ni Levi? Who should be the leader? Ni nani anastahili awe kiongozi wao? And the Lord instructed Moses. Na ye, Mungu akampea masharti Musa. And he said to Moses. Akamwambia Musa hivi. Please ask every tribe. Tafadhali uliza kila kabila. To bring a stick. Walete uh, kijiti. A dry stick. Kijiti ambao kinikikavu. So there were 12 sticks which had a night vigil kesha Wa, walileta vijiti vijiti 12 ambao zilikesha siku hiyo in the temple katika hekalu hallelujah hallelujah who is following because i don't want to lose you ni nani anafuata tuko pamoja and the bible tells us bibili inatuambia hivi that in the morning asubuhi kulipokucha there was one dry stick kulikuwa na kijiti ambayo ilikuwa ni kavu kimoja tu which started bearing fruit ambacho kilianza kuzaa matunda it started bearing almonds kilianza kuzaa mlonzi it was not connected to the soil haikuwa imepandwa katika mchanga it was just a stick ilikuwa tu ni kijiti tu it started getting leaves kilianza kupata matawi hallelujah hallelujah And the Bible says Na Biblia inasema that all the other sticks vijiti vingine vyote they were found the same way they were left zilipatikana vile vile vililetwa because you know a stick does not have life kwa sababu unajua nini kijiti hakina uhai so it cannot turn around akiwezi geuka akisimama kianza kutembea do anything akiwezi akiwezi kufanya chochote but one stick lakini kijiti kimoja it became green kiliku kiliku kibichi it became Uh, it had fruit kikazaa matunda 
you know what I'm trying to say to Nini you? Mina kuambia, when the Lord asked me, wakati Mungu aliniuliza mimi, that what did Jeremiah see? Nini Yeremia aliona? I started to get revelation. Mimi nilianza kupata ufunuo. Do you know what the revelation was? Unajua ufunuo ulikuwa ni upi? You see that what Jeremiah saw? Kila ambacho Yeremia aliona, he saw a dry tree giving life. Aliona mti ambao ulikuwa ni mkavu. He saw the cross of Jesus. Aliona msalaba wa Yesu Kristo. Because he was a prophet. Kwa sababu alikuwa ni nabii. In the olden times. He was taken into the future. Alipelekwa katika muzuni. To see this stick that would bear fruit. And it would bear almonds. Na kitazaa mlonzi wa mchanua. In other words, what Jeremiah saw. Ambacho Jeremiah aliona. He saw the crucifixion. Aliona kusulubishwa. He saw the burial. And he saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ although it was long to happen. So I said to God, yes. I see what Jeremiah saw. That things that are impossible can become possible. In other words, what Jeremiah was seeing, he was seeing the supernatural. For you to touch lives, your eyes must be open. You cannot walk by sight. You cannot see what others are not, just like normal people. Your eyes must be open. Like Jeremiah, he brought the future to the present. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the cross being the place where people are touched. Mahali ambapo watu wanaguswa and Hallelujah. So what did Jeremiah see? He saw the branch of an almond tree. Aliona tawi la mlonzi wa uchanua. By the way trees in the Bible have different meanings. Unajua nini katika Biblia miti ina ina maana tofauti tofauti. But I will not dwell on that too much. Na mimi siwezi kaa pale kwa muda sana. But because I want us to focus on the cross. Lakini kwa sababu nataka tulenge sana msalaba. Jesus was crucified on the cross Yesu alisulubishwa msalabani It was a place where also our debts were paid Ni pale pale madeni yetu yote ililipwa I'm speaking about the cross Ninafikiria juu ya msalaba If you are going to touch lives Kama wewe utagusa maisha One of the ways that Jesus did which was so wonderful Jia moja ambayo Yesu Kristo alifanya na ilikuwa ni ajabu On the cross Katika msalaba He paid a debt he did not owe Alilipa deni ambayo yeye hakuwa hakuwa mdeni lakini alilipa ya mwingine let me say, you cannot avoid to be touched. If somebody comes and finds you with a loan, and clears you alone, utaguzwa ama utaguzwa. Utaguzwa ama utaguzwa. Si utaguzwa. Utaguzwa sana. So the cross is a place where our debt was paid. Yani msalabani ni mali ambapo deni zetu zote zililipua. We had a debt of sin. Tulikuwa na deni la dhambi. Si unaelewa hiyo deni vizuri? Eh? Ni wangapi wanaelewa tulikuwa na deni? Na kwanza nawaombea wote wale wana deni Mungu awalipie katika jina la Yesu. Amina, amina. Mungu amenilipia deni juzi na nimeguzwa zaidi. Niwapatie ushuhuda ama niwache? Mnapenda ushuhuda ama mpendi? Juzi Tulikuwa tume kuna shamba ya eka 21. E, eka 21 ni kama ngapi hivi? Eka 21. Unanisaidia kidogo hapa na pale unaelewa eh? Kuna shamba kama miaka miwili ilipita. Mungu alinionyesha akaniambia hii shamba ni lenyu nani alisema bwana mungu akasema basi nikaanza kufunga na kuomba kwa sababu bwana amenena punde si punde mungu akaniambia 
usiombe kutoka mbali mwambie mwenyewe akupatie funguo kwa sababu kukuwa na mtu ni shamba kubwa ina conference facility nzuri sana hapo Pretoria mimi naishi Pretoria muombe mwenyewe nini funguo nikaenda kumuuliza mwenyewe funguo akanipatia nilikuwa naona kama atakataa kaniambia wewe unaweza enda unaomba huko kwa sababu nataka kuomba siku ishirini na moja. nikaanza kuomba nikafunga wakati moja wakati niko hapa pale ile shambani Mungu akaniambia ile scripture ya Abraham walk Lila andiko la Abraham walk the length and the breadth of the land tembea upana na, na, na wote uh, mzingiro wa hiyo ya hiyo for athi. i give it to you kwa mimi ninakupa hiyo athi that scripture i have preached it ila andiko mimi nilimeliuhiri that preacher that scripture i know it ila andiko mimi ninalijua but it had never come so personal lakini ijai kuwa ya kibinafsi sana no, i mean this land sasa mimi niko katika hiyo athi i have not even walked the length and the breadth of it asasi jatembea upande wake nijue kibinafsi yako vipi the length and the breadth of the land so i give it to you upande wote unatoshana kivipi na mimi nitakupa andiko likakuwa uhai ndani yako you know the word Unajua neno la Mungu linaishi. It can jump out of the scriptures. Inaweza katika maandiko na kuruke na liguse maisha yako. You want to touch people's lives. Unataka kugusa maisha yao. You speak the word. Ni lazima because the word can touch. Kwa sababu neno la Mungu linagusa. So the word came alive. Kwa hivyo neno likakuwa hai. I have not walked. Nikasema mimi sijatembea hiyo. I left my Bible. Nikawacha Biblia yangu. I started to walk the land. kutembea. And as I was walking na nilipokuwa nikitembea I had many questions Nilikuwa na maswali mengi Because that land kwa sababu ile ile ati was owing money with the bank Ilikuwa na deni katika benki The owner was Wenyewe. struggling to pay Alikuwa na shida alikuwa anangangana kulipa hiyo deni So as I was walking the land Kwa wakati sasa mimi nilikuwa natembea ati Nikasema kamwambia Mungu How are you going to give me this land Wewe utanipa hii ati kivipi 50 million ra, uh, yani, 50 million uh, Kenya shillings roughly Yaani um, elfu hamsini za Kenya How are you going to give it to me Utanipaje hii hii ati And the Lord asked me. Na ye bwana akaniuliza hivi. When I told the children of Israel. Wakati niliwaambia wana wa Israeli. That I would give them the land. Kwamba mimi nitawapa earth. Was it occupied? Ilikuwa na mtu ambaye alikuwa anaishi pale. I said yes. Nikasema ndio. By the Canaanites. Kwa sababu wa Canaanites walikuwa wanaishi pale na, na, na pia wa Amori walikuwa wanaishi pale. I said it was occupied. Pale. Kulikuwa na watu walikuwa wanaishi katika hiyo. The Lord inchi. asked me. Na ye bwana akaniuliza. Did I say that the Canaanites would give them? Niliwaambia kwamba wa Kanani watawapa ile athi. And I said no you said you give. Kama Mungu lisema wewe utawapa. And uh, the Lord said to me. Na yeye bwana akaniambia hivi. It is none of your business I will give you. Si biashara yako mimi nitakupatia hiyo athi. That was about two, two years ago. Ni kama miaka 2 hiyo hivi. But for a period of one and a half years. Lakini kwa muda kama mwaka moja na nusu hivi. After God speaking. Baada ya Mungu kunena. Instead of money coming. Baada ya pesa kuja. Money started to disappear. Yaani pesa ilikuwa inatoweka. God has spoken. Yaani Mungu ameongea. And instead of me coming closer to the dream, badala mimi kukaribia ile ndoto yangu. It started to go wrong. Mambo yakabadilika yakawa mrama. Money was now so scarce. Yaani pesa ilikuwa ni ngumu sana kupata. It is like I was going further and further from the dream. Ni kama nilikuwa natoweka kuwa mbali sana and sana na ndoto. Na ili hali Mungu alikuwa amenena. Unajua ni nini shetani alikuwa anajaribu kufanya? He was trying to make my God a liar. Alikuwa anataka kumfanya kama Mungu wangu wa kweli. God cannot lie. Na Mungu hawezi danganya. God cannot lie. Hawezi danganya. The situation was so tough. Hali ilikuwa ni ngumu. Instead the same owner badala yake yule mwenye ni mwenye ile shamba kwa sababu baadaye aliturusi tuweze kuishi pale na tukaandika makubaliano and after we moved in baada ya kuondoka na kuishi pale ndani yeye akatengeneza tutakatengeneza mali pale ilikuwa inaonekana mzuri sana lakini tulipa hatukua tumemlipa chochote after a few months baada ya miezi chache tu the owner decided to move into the property mwenyewe akaamua kuingia pale ishi naye pale when we are already inside wakati sisi tuko pale tumeshajenga kuna kuna mjengo nyingi pale ndani i said how can you move in nikauliza sasa wewe unaweza kuja kuishi hapa this was not part of our agreement hatukua tumekubaliana na wewe kwamba utakuja kuishi hapa lakini unajua yeye ni mwenye ile shamba ningeweza kumsimamisha kivipi he moved in 
Yeye aliingia pale akaishi pamoja nasi. Cut a long story short. Ili niweze kukata hii hadithi kwa fupi kidogo. To put pressure. Yeye akaanza kukunitia mkazo. For money. Ata, anataka pesa. And the more I prayed for money. Na wakati mimi nilikuwa naomba nipate pesa. The more money became scarce. Pesa ikawa ngumu kupata. Ninaona ni kama mimi tu napitianga vitu hizo ngumu. Nyinyi mnaonekana nyinyi mambo yenu yote ni sawa sawa. Wacha tu niwaambie tu mambo Nyinyi mnapitianga kama mimi naona kama naonewa saa zingine mimi. Nyinyi wao mnaona kama mmeonewa. Unapitia mambo mangumu. Eh? Bwana. Do you know what happened? Unajua ni nini ilifanyika? As the time went on. Kama wakati ulipokuwa inaenda my faith was shaken imani yangu ilitikisika i'm admitting to you mimi ninakubali na sema hiyo msiambie hao wengine wajakuja imani ilitikisika <laughs> mnafikiria kati watumishi wa Mungu imani yao iweze tingizwa bwana ilitingika kwa sababu sasa muda unaenda hakuna pesa nilisema Mungu atalete na na sasa kunachukua nini muda wacha niwaambie vile Mungu alitenda wakati sasa tukafika mahali tukasema wacha tuhame mahali hapa pengine hatukusikia Mungu vizuri umewahi kufika mahali unasema wacha nioe nioe huyu kijana hata kama hana meno ule alisema mzuri mrefu hakuji wacha nioe tu huyu hana meno ule ule wa ishara na miujiza nimechoka kungoja <laughs> ni wangapi wamewahi ama ni mimi tu anaona hivyo una, una, unajua kile Mungu amesema unaona kiko mbali Wacha nitafute plan B. Sasa plan B yangu ilikuwa tuhame turudi tu. Sasa hii mambo ya kuwa na imani kubwa ya vitu vikubwa tuachi. Tuende kwa vitu nini? Vidogo vidogo. Na hiyo ni shetani mkubwa. Kama wewe ni mtu wa imani kubwa kama hali pale. Mnasikia hiyo mambo? Mungu adanganyani wakati sasa tukamwambia mwenyewe basi tutahama mwisho wa may kwanza tuka first agreement was we move end of may makubaliano yetu ya kwanza tulikubaliana tuondoke mwisho wa mwezi wa may because no money kwa sababu hatukuwa na pesa now end of may na sasa wakati mwisho wa mwezi wa may i'm invited to come and preach here nilialikwa nikuja kwa kuhubiri by the youth called afleo ambao wana youth wanaitwa afleo so i come nikaja with my wife na mke wangu we land at the airport tunafika pale katika um, ndege and i put on Iwanja my phone kindege. na mimi nafungua na, na simu yangu end of may mwisho wa mwezi wa may and i saw somebody was looking for me na nikaona mtu alikuwa ananitafuta sana yani nilikuwa na simu tisa nilikuwa nimekosa nikashindwa ni nani alikuwa amenipiga piga simu mara nyingi hivyo nikapiga simu hapo hapo south africa and the man introduce, uh, introduces himself na ule jamaa akajitambulisha kwangu. He says apostle where are you? Nika akaniuliza mtume wewe uko wapi? I'm preaching in Kenya. Mimi niko hapa Kenya na ubiri. What do you want? Unataka nini? I cannot tell you on the phone. Siwezi kuambia katika simu. How long are you in Kenya? Uko kwa muda gani mrefu upi hapa Kenya? I'm in Kenya for 10 days. Niko hapa Kenya kwa msiku Call me when you come back. Ebu 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 acha nirudi alafu utanipigia. When I went back. Wakati mimi nilirudi. I called the gentleman. Nilimpigia simu. He said come to Johannesburg. Nika akaniambia njoo hapa Johannesburg. I went to Johannesburg. Nikaenda pale Johannesburg. He said to me. Naye akaniambia hivi. My superior yule mkubwa wangu has wangu, instructed me to release 5 million rand to you. Ameniamuru kukuachilia milioni 5 milioni 5 za rand za South Africa kwako. 50 million Kenya shillings. I don't know how much. Yaani from Sydney za Kenya. What my wife started crying. Mke wangu akaanza kulia. I started to wonder. Nikaanza kushangaa. How do I thank the Lord? Yaani mimi nitamshukuru Mungu kivipi? From then on I am recruiting everybody to help me thank the Lord. Kwa sababu yani, naona nilikuwa na, na natafuta watu wengi kunisaidia kumshukuru Mungu. Hata wewe lazima uende umshukuru. Hata wewe ni lazima uende umshukuru Mungu. Kwa sababu nina kampeni ya kuchukua. Kwa sababu nimepiga kampeni ya kumshukuru Mungu. Two days left later 50 50 million Kenya shillings was in my account. Yaani siku mbili baadaye 1500 za Kenya zilikuwa account yangu. 21 acres we have bought it cash. Yaani ekari 21 zilinunua kwa kwa pesa taslim. Ziko si deni cash. The God 
God who spoke, he fulfilled. I am here to bring you a word from heaven. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Whether you are going through the valley, whether you are going through the mountains, whether the promises of God are looking like they are not true. The Bible says, even if you are faithless, he remains faithful. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forevermore. When he speaks, he is not speaking jokes. He is not a man like you. God is not a man that it should lie. He is a faithful God. The people who are laughing at karaoke. Wale watu walikuwa wanamchekelea karaoke. He will be kicked out. Waliondolewa. He they were saying I'll be kicked out. Walikuwa wanasema nitapigwa teke niondoke. One of my relatives was came to stay with us. One of my relatives. Mmoja wa jamaa yangu. And he started to tell my workforce. Akaanza kuambia wale watendazi wafanyikazi wangu. Wacha rushwe nje hata hana nyumba Kenya. Wacha apigwe teke aondoke hapata pale Kenya hana nyumba. You imagine your own relative. Imagine wewe fikiria hii watu wa jamaa. Ndio I knew it was him. Ni nani mwingine huko South Africa anajua sina nyumba Kenya. Imagine relative wako. Yaani mtu wako wa jamaa wa jamii yako. Hiyo mwaka moja na nusu nimepitia mambo ya kutosha. Watu wachungaji wengine wamekuja huko nimewa invite to breakfast wa kule. Kule ni mali yangu bure wengi. Wengine walikuwa naniangalia na wivu tu. Ninaona hawataki nipate. Wanaona wanasema karaoke has beaten more than he can chew. Yaani hiyo karaoke amekula zaidi ya stahili kutafuna. Nyinyi mnachekelea wangu ama ni mimi tu? I want to prophesy to somebody who has been going through challenges with people. Natabiri kwa yule mtu ambaye amekuwa akipitia mambo magumu. Your laugh will be better than yani, what they are laughing. Yaani You will laugh the loudest. Kuliko kicheko chao. Hallelujah. The Lord will turn your situation around. Badilisha hali yako. He will turn your shame into faith. Badilisha ipi yako iwe He will turn your emptiness into fullness. He will turn your dishonor to honor. You are not leaving this conference the same way. I refuse. Something supernatural is going to happen. Hallelujah. Ketini, ketini, kidogo. Hamta toka hivu. Tuja kuja kucheza banta. Tume kuja kuambia ukweli. Bwana anabadilisha mambo. Na ni muaminifu. Hashindwi. Anaweza. Na ni nongeju ya msalaba kwa sababu. Msalaba ni maali pa ushindi. I must study for 10 minutes. I finish. Ntarudi jioni kwa hivyo tutaonana. Lakini wacha ni rudi msalaba ni kidogo. The cause Msalaba. is where our debts were paid. Ni ambapo madeni yote yote ilikuwa. The reason I was bringing the issue of my debt. Sababu ni kwa na leta hii hali yangu ya deni. The person God used. Yule ambaye Mungu alitumia. To pay the debt. Kulipa deni zangu. Ha. I have been moved. Mimi nimeguswa. Ni, nimeguswa ni, ni kikweli. Nikajiuliza. Mimi mwenyewe ninaweza toa milioni 5 za rand nipatie mtu nikaona hiyo area lazima pia mimi niamke ninatoanga nimepatiana magari nyingi nimepatiana vitu vingi lakini huyu wa milioni tano, amenichapa tenila yani kumi sufuri eh, 50 million alitoa 1050 milioni 50 za Kenya za hapa Kenya rand kama milioni tano. Nimeona ili tuguze watu si maneno tu Utaongea mpaka kesho tafuta mtu mlipie deni utakuwa umemguza na umebadilisha maisha yake Amina Amina Tafuta mtu hana school school fees mlipie uone kama hataguzwa Si kusema kuguzwa tu ni ile tu eh, kuguzwa tu 
Yesu ametulipia gharama ya dhambi wapi? Msalabani. Ili tupate uzima wa nini? Wa milele. Hiyo deni wewe haungelipa. Hata uwezi anza kulipa. Kwa hivyo msalaba ni mahali pa kulipwa nini? Deni. So the cross Kwa hivyo msalaba touching people changing kugusa watu kubadilisha maisha. You learn from the cross. Ni lazima ujifundishe kutoka kwa msalaba. Make the cross a place of study. Hebu fanya mahali pa msalaba mahali pa kujifundisha. Because the cross teaches us how we can touch people. Kwa sababu msalaba inatufundisha jinsi gani tunachukua maisha ya watu na kuwabadilisha maisha yao. The cross is also a place where we learn to lay our lives down. Ni mahali hapa pia tunajifundisha kuweka maisha kujitoa maisha yetu. It was a place of death. Ni mahali pa kifo. The Bible says. Biblia inasema hivi. Unless the seed falls to the ground and dies. Yangu iende chini na ife. It remains by itself. Inabaki tu peke yake. But if it lakini wakati hiyo mbegu inakufa ndio itazaa matunda mengi mpaka sisi tukubakukukutana alafu sisi wenyewe tunatakifo sisi we sisi ndio tunaishi but christ who is living in us ni kristo anaishi ndani yetu we cannot touch life hatuwezi kugusa maisha because the one who knows how to touch life kwa sababu yule ambaye anajua kugusa maisha ni Yesu Kristo Jesus Yesu Kristo wa Nazareth so how do we allow him to Why touch you? lives in abidi tufanye vipi ile tumruhusu aguse maisha kwa sisi by taking the cross daily kuchukua msalaba kila siku tunakufa so that it is no longer us who are living ni sisi tunaishi tena it is christ living bali ni kristo anaishi ndani yetu amina Because if he's living in you. Kama yeye anaishi ndani yako. You shall touch people. Utagusa maisha ya watu. You shall change lives. Utabadilisha maisha ya watu. But you must yourself come to the cross. Lakini lazima we mwenyewe uje msalabani. And come to the cross. Na wewe ukabidi. Come to the foot of the cross. Ukuja katika miguuni ya msalaba. And so that the old Simon dies. Ili yule yule mtu wa zamani afe. The old Kimani dies. Ule ule Kimani wa zamani afe. The old Odwar dies. Yule Odwar Now it is no longer I who lives. But it is Christ who lives in me. The same things Jesus did. To touch lives. To transform lives. Even greater things will he do. But through you. If you allow him. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. To work through you. So you must die. You must die to self. So that Christ lives in you. The cross. Touching people. Transforming. Let me tell you something. And I, think, I cannot finish the whole sermon. Today, but I'll try and finish just quickly. Because you don't have to talk for very long to drive the point home. Si lazima ongea mambo mengi niweze tupate ni nini kini aso ya ujumbe. You finish. For me I'll finish quickly. I have no issue to to stay, keep you here for two hours for Mimi nitamaliza kwa haraka. Sina na, sina haja Na wakati tu haraka ni malize, si ndio? Ndio mm. wengine msilale hapa kwa sababu hapa si bed and breakfast. Unajua wale wanalala <laughs> kanisani zile naongoza ukilala. Ukilala. Huwa ninaanza kuita ashas. Mimi ni mkali si kama bishop wenyu. Ninaanza kusema Ashas bring a bed this person thinks here yeah, it is bed and breakfast let it stand kuna mtu anafikiria hapa ni wapari pa na wakati mmoja talete kitanda niweke mahali ndio ule analala namwambia wewe you are coming to church or to sleep kulikuwa nakuja kanisani wewe ulikuwa nakuja kulala kitanda ndio hichi hebu wewe jiekelea hapo ulale mnaona mimi ni mbaya sana sijaokoka nimeokoka yesu ni bwana Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Let me talk about the cross. Now, by the way, Jesus, Yesu Christo, did so much at the cross. Alifanya mambo mengi sana pale msalabani. And it's not even explained. Na ijaelezwa sana. Do you know one time I was reading a scripture? Unajua kuna wakati mmoja nilikuwa nasoma maandiko katika Mathayo 27. 
I saw when Jesus was being crucified. There was an earthquake. There was darkness. And I asked myself. Why was there an earthquake? Why was there a darkness? And the Lord told me. Do you know Simon? Unajua nini Simioni? That when I was being crucified. Wakati mimi nilikuwa nasulubishwa. I was building a house. Nilikuwa najenga nyumba. I said, well, Lord speak to me. Nikasema, eh Bwana, hebu niambie zaidi. The new tabernacle. Ile tabernacle mpya. I'm not talking of the old one. Sineni yule ya zamani. Was built between the day Jesus was crucified. Katikati ya siku Yesu Kristo alisulubishwa. He was buried and he was resurrected. When he was being crucified, he was put in the court heavenly courtyard. When he was buried, he put up the holy place. Ah, when he resurrected, he finished the holy of holies. When Jesus was being crucified, at a cross, he was put in a house. And as he was dying on that cross, there was a farewell party of the old tabernacle. And there was a house warming of a new house. When Jesus was being crucified, there was a change of priesthood from the Levitical priesthood to the priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. When Jesus was being crucified, on that day, kinship Ukufalme. Kist. Yani. Priesthood. Ukuhani. If my wife was there, I would have shown you very nicely. On that day, Jesus was being crucified. Kinship. Yani ufalme. Married priesthood. Ulioa ukuhani. Let me explain a little bit further. Do I explain? Nieleze hiyo. One of the reasons there was an earthquake. Kitu cha kwanza sababu ambayo kulikuwa na mtetemeko wa ardhi is that when you want to build a new house yani wakati unataka kujenga nyumba mpya you bring a caterpillar ni lazima ulete ile ya, ya kubomoa to ile clear kata, the way. ile mashini ya, ya kubomoa unapomoa and sometimes some of us don't understand when an earthquake comes our way yani ni ni kama mtetemeko unakuja katika when njia yako wants to do a new thing wakati Mungu anataka kufanya jambo jipya wakati mwingi kuna kuwa na mtikisiko to clear the ground kutoa ile because he's about to do a new thing kuna jambo jipya linastahili kujengwa ama kufanywa the earthquake was meant to level yani ile mtetemeko wa ardhi ilikuwa inastahili kuweka kwa kila kitu tambarare the mountains that the low the, uh, the low milima iwe iwekwe chini Uh, L A W Milima ile eh uh, low sheria ilikuwa imelete kwa hivyo hiyo earthquake ilikuwa inafanya kila kitu iwe nini ikwe ikwe tambarare ndile ile ajenge nini nyumba hiyo mpya na ni hekalu ya kiroho it's a spiritual tabernacle ni hekalu ya kiroho tuko pamoja wangapi wamepotea hebu a a mwa Oh. <laughs> Nikwa nafikiria mmesafiri me, kidogo sijui mmeenda wapi. So on that day Jesus was being crucified Kwa on the cross. Kwa hivyo Yesu Kristo alikuwa anasulubishwa pale msalabani. Things were happening. Vitu mingi zilifanyika. Do you know why they removed his clothes? Unajua ni kwa nini walitoa nguo zake? Because there was a marriage to take place. Kulikuwa na ndoa ilikuwa tayari kufanyika. Kinship to priesthood. Yaani ya ile ya, ya ufalme na ukuhani. Ukienda ndoa unavaa ile nguo ya zamani ama unanunua mpya. Hapa kasarani mnavaa zile mzee. Si mnavaa mpya. Hebu kwanza tuimbie hawa happy anniversary. Wamemaliza miaka mbili happy anniversary to you. Wacheni imbeni ndio kama hauna utapata. To you. Leo. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, anniversary to you. Hip hip. Nyam fanya hurray hapa yanyu ni. Hip hip. Hurray. Learn to celebrate others. If you are going to touch life, celebrate, celebrate others also. Kama wewe utagusa maisha ya watu lazima ujifundishe kusherekea watu wengine.
Amen. Sinimalize hapo. Naona tumalize hapo muende mkule chakula. But God lakini Mungu is going to use you. Atakutumia wewe to touch people. Kugusa maisha ya watu. To change lives. Kubadilisha maisha. Remember to learn from the cross. Jifundishe kumbuka jifundishe kutoka kwa msalaba. I'm not completely done. Mimi sijamaliza kabisa. But we are going to meet in the evening. Lakini tutakutana jioni. Are you going to be ready for more? Mko tayari kupokea zaidi? wale wanapenda kusoma wachungaji huyu ana upako ina gani wache utoshe unajua kuna wale wanaweka glasses huyu huyu amemtoa south africa kwa nini mbona wasilete huyu mwingine hiyo ni shauri yako wache hiyo tumekuja ku, kubarikiwa na yoyote eh? amina mungu anaweza hata tumia punda eh? wengine wenyu mnakuwa na tabia ya kwamba ku size up the preacher mwache no need. Hakuna haja. Mnaelewa ninawafundisha tu. Mm. Wakati mwingine upokee neno ni kwa sababu ule anakuja pengine hajavaa tai vizuri. Leo nimekuja na kaunda suit. Nione kama utakubali neno. Mm. Ili huwa ninacheza, ninaambia. Mnaona mimi si mtumishi nitakuja na kola ya baba yangu. Mimi ni mtoto wa mchungaji, wa presbyterian na cross. Unajua wengine wenyu mkiona wamevaa vinguo vizuri ndio oh, huyu ni mtumishi. Watumishi wanavaliwa nguo zingine. Si hizi. Nguo za utakatifu. Yeah. Unaweza vaa nguo hizi zingine zote na hujavalishwa. Mm. Ah. Msalaba wa Yesu. Mm. Wewe umwe kuja hapo kwa msalaba wa Yesu, maisha yako ikabadilika ama wewe ni church goer. Wewe ni mtu akuja tu kanisa. Mimi nime encounter huyo msalaba. Na maisha yangu ikabadilishwa. Na dhambi zangu zikaoshwa. Mimi nime nimepafanya hivyo. Ule anaohubiria si kazi, ni mwito. Na msalaba sitaki kutoa katikati. Kwanza huo msalaba unanifunza kujitolea. Unanifunza mambo mengi. Kwa hivyo tuhubiri mambo ya msalaba. Basi mchungaji mwidhi ni wewe unaombesha njoo wacha msimameni mchungaji aombeshe. Inua mkono juu wacha aombeshe dakika moja na utabarikiwa tutaonana jioni. Mimi nahisi katika moyo wangu kwamba kuna mtu hapa ambaye Bwana angependa kulipa deni yako. Pengine siyo deni ya hela lakini kuna kitu ambao umemwamini Mungu anaizalenda katika maisha yako na kwa upako ulio katika aposto ningependa atuombe amen tukiona mikono yetu kwa Mungu that God will do it because he is faithful shall we pray wacha tuombe everlasting king of glory Mungu uishie wa utukufu mighty one of Israel Mungu wa Israeli the one who paid the debt for us Yudambea lipadeni kwa ajili yetu at the cross pale msalabani We want to thank you Nataka kukushukuru I beseech you king of glory that you will pay the debts of your people Kwa utalipadeni ya watu wako the debt of sin deni ya dhambi even financial debts hata zile za fedha even debts that they owe of love hata zile madeni maisha ya father i declare in the name of jesus that your people will be transformed by the power of the cross by the power of the blood of jesus i declare the supernatural that which jeremiah saw he saw jesus rising from the dead I declare the resurrection power to break every yoke of the enemy to destroy every hindrance of the enemy and to touch your people and to transform them so that they can be agents of change teach them to carry the cross teach them to be men and women of sacrifice teach them to be men and women of love in the name of Jesus Bless is your children this afternoon. I prophesy a new day. I prophesy a new door. I prophesy a breakthrough upon their lives. 
I declare and decree upon their lives that their situations are changing. That darkness is becoming light. In the name of Jesus, that situations are changing. That Lord healing is coming their way. Finances are coming their way. Father, show your faithfulness upon their lives. In the name of Jesus, I spoil the works of the devil in their lives. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of sin and iniquity, I destroy you through the blood of Jesus. Set them free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord indeed. Deni yako imeripo.